What's up guys, this is Teddy. Welcome to my YouTube channel. This video, we're going to be talking about Angular directives. And directives are a very important part of the Angular framework because this is a interview question. This is like a trick interview question that more than likely you probably will be asked this question because I've been asked this question and I've seen it, I've been seeing it being asked everywhere. And that is, is a compo what is the difference between a component and a directive? So we, I know that you know about components, obviously you have to, and directives, we're learning about directives now, but the difference between a component and a directive actually really isn't even that much. The difference between a component and a directive is, is that a component actually has the view. A component actually has um, what you would call HTML or more, I guess, appropriately named elements. But more than likely, the real information that's going to help you in terms of your day-to-day -day life isn't that. It's always the uh, interview questions that really don't matter that much. Really what's going to matter is you knowing the difference between a structural directive and an attribute directive. And the difference between them really isn't even that much, but a structural directive actually modifies the, fa the actual structure of the house. A, if, so if you had a house, um, your structural directives would be things like the framing of the house, the things, the roofing, the things that actually hold it up. Attribute directives would be more, you paint the house. Attribute directives have more to do with how the house looks on the outside as opposed to structural directives, which have more to do with the actual, I guess, you know, framing of the house, whatever you want to call it. And attribute directives, you, pr you, you are already familiar with what attribute directives are. Attribute directives, um, you've got ng style, you've got ng class, there's router. Um, any single time that you see a attribute that doesn't look like normal HTML and is something that is made by Angular, a lot of times it's going to be that attribute directive. Maybe not always, but more than likely, if it's not an ng if or an ng for, which I'll talk about here in a second, it's going to be like ng style. It's not, remember that though, because a structural directive, which we're going to talk about here in a second, is going to be ng if. We call ng if structural, like I said, because we have the house and the structural foundation is going to be the framing while the attribute directive is going to be like like I said like the painting of the house and that's going to be the biggest you know biggest difference between them now what really depends on what we really depend on now is how do you actually make your own custom directive so if you want to make and building your own custom directives is going to be very powerful because you can modify the DOM and you can modify or you can make ng ifs and you can do all types of really crazy things to modify the HTML in your DOM just like with the structural directives that are provided to us from Angular, Angular like ng if, ng for and the attribute directives like ng style, ng class, what if we want to make our own? This is going to be a little bit of foreshadowing because here in a second, I'm going to hop over and we're going to make our own actual attribute directives and structural directives, which will help you a ton when you actually become a developer. So let's go ahead and jump in VS Code and let's take a look. Okay, so now we are in VS Code. The first thing that we want to do is we want to make our own directives folder. I think it always looks really good when you have the underscore directives and any of these ancillary folders that you need whatever the word would be like these subfolders that are have nothing to do with the actual ui i think it's always good to put a underscore in front of it to make it look a little bit neater okay so next thing is also i've installed the angular files uh vs code extension so if you want that 
you can do that because that's what I'm about to use. So in order to create this custom directive, what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go in here and generate a directive, super simple. And if you look, it's right under component because it's going to be one of the most common of, the ex of that extension that you're going to use. So first things first, we're gonna do a custom, I'm just gonna type in custom if, and what's gonna happen is it's gonna go ahead, generate that for me. We could make this look a little bit better, but I think this looks great on its own. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm just going to come in here and I'm going to make a highlight text um, directive. So I'm gonna go highlight. And as you probably guessed, you could tell what these are going to do. So just for practice, what do you think is the difference between these? Which one is the attribute directive and which one is the structural directive? The custom if, which we're going to make, which is just going to be literally like our very own little if statement that we're going to code is going to be a structural directive. The second one is going to be our highlight text directive. Um, fits the case of, you know, you're painting the house, you're just doing something visually to the HTML, and that is going to be the attribute directive. And we'll go ahead and start with the highlight text because it's going to be a lot easier to reason about. So what I'm gonna do is first thing, I'm gonna go into this constructor right here and we're going to make another element ref. So I talked about what an element ref was in my in one of my other videos, and I've got a whole video dedicated to what this actually is, but if you don't know what this is, it's essentially going to be the actual J Java, JavaScript, I'm sorry, for this whatever we're going to pass into it. So if we put this, or if we tack on this highlight text to a piece, a H2, this essentially, this EL is going to represent the actual JavaScript from the DOM. And I always give the analogy of, it's like a mechanic raising the car up into the bay. You're essentially raising that JavaScript up into Angular so that you can work on it and you can do whatever you want to with it. Okay, so next thing is we're going to add one of these things called a host listener. And this is essentially just an attribute that's going to listen for events. And whenever we actually click on this event, what's going to happen is it's going to execute this mouse enter. And whenever you are coding regular TypeScript, you don't have host listener, but because we're in a directive, we're going to be using a host listener. So we're gonna have EL, we're gonna have this thing called a native element, and we're actually going to start manipulating the actual JavaScript right here, which I think is pretty cool. It's pretty amazing that you can just pull the JavaScript up into this thing and it will actually like let you manipulate it. But you have to realize too that the element ref is not the way that you should be doing this. You should actually be using what's called a render. And once again, if you want to deep dive in this topic, I would probably do that because render is a used a lot and native element is used a lot and you need to know the differences between the two, but just know that render is the safer version because you can use it in Ionic, you can use it in platforms that are not web-based or server-side rendering, which you might have because of SEO purposes wherever you work. If your business, this is like another thing, another really big gotcha with Angular. So with Angular, um, if you want to have really good SEO, you can do SEO in other forms that are kind of gimmicky, but if you want really good SEO and you want to make sure that the page is actually loaded beforehand, you have to use server-side rendering. So that might save you a lot of time if you're building an app that has a lot to do with SEO. So hopefully somebody, if that's you, hopefully you're paying attention because that's really important. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is I'm actually gonna come up here and I think that looks like doo-doo. I'm gonna come up here and change that. Then what I'm going to do is you need to make sure that these are in your uh, feature module. So we have the root module, which is right here, not the same thing as a feature module. Then we have our feature module right here. Then we're gonna go come down here and we're going to actually edit this. So we're gonna have highlight, text directive, 
that we're going to come down to here and we're going to bootstrap so that it uh, loads everything like on load and we're going to have highlight text directive right here and that should be it actually I need to make sure let's add another div element in here so that we can actually change the color and the way that you do that is or, so it's just going to be highlight text and our IntelliSense is working great and this is highlight text so let's go ahead and run this and see what it looks like see if it's working just going to bring this over here also make sure to have your JSON server wired up if you're following along so that you can actually pull the Pokemon data. You don't have to follow it though. So this is highlight text. And if you look, if I hover over it, it will show blue. The next thing that we need to do is we need to start working on our custom directive. So what we're gonna do here is let's actually come down here and we're gonna have an H2 and then here, we're going to have a, let's call it custom, I think it already is called custom if, but if it's not, we'll go back and change it. And we'll set this to true. Okay, so that's looking good. Then we'll come in here and we'll say this is true. Looking great. And then we'll come down here, we'll say, this is false. All right, so what we need to do now is we actually need to go into our custom directive and start coding this thing because there's there's no code in here. Okay, so what we could probably do first is we could get rid of the app in front of the custom if, make it look a little bit better. And what we're gonna have here is we're gonna have an input so that when it passes this in, it will be able to have the true or the false. So the custom if is gonna come down here, gonna come down here, and then we're going to have a Boolean, and this is gonna equal false. Then we will come down here, and we're gonna have an ng on init. So on init, it's going to check if it's false. Then we're gonna have void. So we'll have void ng on init. And I think I spelled it wrong. So ng on init, we're gonna have a void. Then we come in here, we're gonna have if, and if this custom if that we just made up here, so if this is true, we don't have to actually put any equality operator because it's if it's there, it's true. If it's false, it's false. And then we're gonna go into, we need to bring in what's called a template ref. So I talked about, previously we talked about element ref, and this is really important too. So previously we talked about element ref, and element ref is what's going to allow us to reach into just any, any old HTML element. But custom if is for, if you are a template ref is for when you have ng templates. So if you look at this thing right here, this is really important, please pay attention. If you look at this right here, what this is actually under the underneath is a ng template. So if you think this is actually an H2, what's really happening is there's an ng template in here. And I talk about more about what ng template is in another video, but ng template is essentially a template. And even though it looks like an H2, it's not. So if you try to use anything but ng template, you will get an error. But what we have here is we have, instead of a um, element ref, we have a template ref. And that's why it's called a template ref. And it's actually pretty important to know that. So I, that's, like I said, it's something I would make sure that you know. So template ref, we're gonna come in here. We're gonna go import template ref. Then the next thing what we're gonna do is we're going to bring in our view container. And the view container is what you actually make. You can do this thing called dynamically creating views. So if you have a view container, like I said, it's just, a, or it's just the way that it sounds. It's a container so that you can do this thing called create embedded view. 
And whenever you create a view, basically what's gonna happen is it's going to tack on this view, just put it on there at runtime so that you can dynamically create this. So at runtime, this thing's actually underneath the hood of this ng if you're actually cre or you're underneath every single ng if what you're really doing is you're you have this template ref stuff in here and that's what's happening when you create views dynamically so next thing we're going to go do do this dot vcr and then after you get done you need to clear this component you need to throw it away just like you would do like an ng on destroy but here because it's an actual view we don't want to tack anything else on we just want to get rid of it destroy it and we should be good to go so what we're going to do is we're going to come up here and we're going to actually take a look and see if this actually loaded up correctly. So I'm going to go up here, going to go to my app. Okay, so I forgot to, I need to take my own advice because I forgot to bring in the custom if into the actual Pokemon base feature module. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come up here, we're going to go custom if directive and let's try this again, see if it works. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, this is true works. We've learned a lot today. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, make sure to hit that like button. Make sure to hit that subscribe button. And as always, thank you for watching.